This is Jazz at Lincoln Centers. Let freedom swing New Orleans dreams. I'm Jake Lassini, and let's meet the band. Jake Goldbass on drums, everybody. Make some noise. Yeah. Endia Owens on bass. Yeah. Justin Poindexter on banjo. Yeah. Peter Yaron on piano. Yeah. Brianna Thomas on vocals. Yeah. Riley Maherker on trumpet. Yeah. Dennis Lickman on clarinet. Yeah. And Dion Tucker on trombone. Sounds lovely, everyone. Thank you. 
Well, today, we are taking a musical journey down to the birthplace of jazz. Where is the birthplace of jazz? New Orleans. Absolutely. Has anyone here ever been to New Orleans? Everyone? Everyone's been to New Orleans. So we know New Orleans is a very, very special place. And around the time jazz was developed, you could find all different types of people from all over the world, and they all brought their different culture, their music, their food, their traditions, and the music started to blend together, and what we get is this music we're playing today, jazz. Now, we're going to talk about three different characters from New Orleans and a couple different traditions. And I was wondering, India, could you talk about this first musical tradition? Of course. New Orleans is one of my favorite places in the entire world. That's because it's full of rich culture, history, and great, great music. Everywhere I go in New Orleans, I hear the second line parades. I hear music at home. You can hear music at church with your friends, with your families. And one of those rhythms that I used to hear all the time is this one right here. You can clap it with me. Hey. Say New Orleans. Yes, that's how we get down in New Orleans. And it's such an amazing thing. But one thing that a lot of people do not know is the special funeral tradition in New Orleans. So a lot of times in the world, funerals are seen as something somber, something sad. But in New Orleans, it's seen as a homecoming because we all know that when someone passes away, their soul and their spirit never truly dies. They're always with us everywhere that we go. So when you listen to this next song, I want you to hear what the instruments are playing. I want you to hear what the trombone is playing, the trumpet. What rhythm is the piano playing? What is Jake playing on the drums? And then send us how you're feeling. Tell us how you feel. What emotions did you feel? So here it is.
clap for that. I'll clap for that. Yeah. Wow. India, you're right. So many different emotions. And actually, some of you at home sent us your thoughts on the different emotions there. Would, would it be OK if I shared some of them with everybody? Cool. So this is from Micah, a third grader from PS245 in New York City. And they said, the first song was slow and sad. The notes were held long, like whole notes, but a lot of them. The second song was fast and lively, upbeat and happy. The notes are short and loud. It's pretty great. The next one is from Ava, a 10th grader from Alhambra High School in Alhambra, California. They said, the first was loud and had sad atmosphere to it. Nothing was quiet. And to me, the song seemed as one's last laugh. Oh. The second was loud but lively. It was a celebration of life and had everyone dancing. There is no sad atmosphere but a party-like one. Wow. Thank you for those observations. That was great. Speaking of party, uh, I mean, I like to party. I think everyone here likes to party. New Orleans definitely likes to party. And uh, my friend Jake over here likes to party as well. That I do, Jake. Must be in the name. <laughs> Must right. be. Can you tell us about our next musical tradition from New Orleans? Absolutely. Now, jazz music, the music that we're playing up here today, is comprised of three ingredients. Swing, which is a groove that makes you move. It's my job up here with India. The blues and improvisation. Now, improvisation is a really big word that basically means that someone is creating something in the moment, given what they have. Now, all of these amazing musicians up here, you've heard them improvising, each one individually over the rhythm section. Now, in this next tune, you are going to hear what we call collective improvisation, which is very special to New Orleans, and we're going to deconstruct it for you right after this tune. Enjoy.
Beautiful, beautiful. My heart, my heart. You are all my sweethearts now. <laughs> Justin, will you break down collective improvisation for us? Absolutely, Jake, I'd be happy to. So normally in jazz music, you know, we improvise, we take solos one at a time. Something we all work at, but it's something that we're used to. Well, in New Orleans, there's something very special called collective improvisation, and it's where people improvise collectively, meaning together. Now, you need some special skills to be able to do that. You can't, uh, I'll tell you what, have you ever had a conversation with someone and it sounded like this? Hey, Dennis, remember when you know, we were at breakfast yeah, the other day I saw this and you ordered the huge pancakes dog on the at, way over at IHOP and you said, I only want, it, was it has to be 100% real maple syrup. But its head was like and up to here I said, on you me. should at least try the, the strawberry syrup though, or the red, or the red, or there was that. a black, I couldn't believe it. there was I've blackberry never seen syrup any... too. You got to try it. Dog. You know, that just, that just really didn't work very well. If you're going to improvise collectively, well, let, let's try it this way. Can, can you play a little bit of the melody of Someday Sweetheart, like, like we just played it? Yeah. yeah. Hold on just a, no, hold on a second. Can you, can you put you know, a little Riley vibe in there? Like, oh, the Riley vibe? Yeah, the imp right. improvisatory spirit, if you will. Got it, got okay. it. Something. Nice. Dion, you wanna you wanna add something to this conversation? Dennis, can you tell me what, what skills did you use to be able to, you guys all played at the same time and yet it made sense and it was beautiful. How did you do it? Well, unlike our conversation before, we were all listening to each other and responding appropriately and doing something that blended with the others instead of just playing over them and squashing what they were doing. Ah, so in collective improvisation, we have to listen to each other and then respond. Absolutely. Yeah. How, how is your cat, by the way? Uh, well, it was a giant dog, actually, so oh. I'm not sure that you were listening oh. so well either. <laughs> Sorry, I guess I'll just need to practice my collective improvisation a little bit. All right, well, now that we know what collective improvisation is, I feel like we should probably do another song that features it, but much, much faster, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, a, like a super, super fast song? Do you want to do you want to do that song of your favorite song, Tiger Rag? Do you want to do that one? Tiger Rag. The Tiger Rag. Yeah. Arr. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fast tempo. Jake, how fast can you do it?
tiger egg, the tiger egg. <laughs> so that Riley, you said that was your your favorite song. That's my favorite. I mean, it scares me a little bit, but it is my favorite song every time I play it. It is a little scary, but fun and exciting. It's scary. I think Dion was the scariest in that song. I heard that tiger over there, and I had to run. <laughs> oh. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Riley, <laughs> do you think that you could talk about one of your uh, musical heroes? I would love to talk about one of my musical heroes. Thank you, Jake. You know, my musical hero was born in that city that jazz was born in. What, what city was that again? New Orleans. New Orleans, that's right. Coincidence or not, I think not that my hero was born in the city where jazz was born, and he played the trumpet, just like me. That's why he's my hero. And his name was Louis Armstrong. Can everyone say Louis Armstrong? Louis Armstrong. I love to hear his name because he's my hero. So Louis Armstrong was born in New Orleans, he played the trumpet, but he didn't just play the trumpet. No, he could also sing. He was an incredible singer. In fact, he was such a good singer that he didn't even need words to sing. I'm yeah, I know what you mean. He didn't even need words. The rest of us ordinary folks, when we sing a song, we use words, right? When we have a conversation, we use words. But Louis Armstrong, he could make up his own words. He would use syllables to imitate the sounds of the instruments around him, and he would make up words on the spot. Now, he was so good at making up words instead of using regular words that they decided to make a word for making up words without using regular words. And that word <laughs> is scat singing. Can you all say scat singing? Scat singing. Word. So scat singing is all about making up nonsense syllables and using them in a song. And we're so lucky today because we have one of the masters of scat singing with us today. And she just happens to be sitting right next to me, Miss Brianna Thomas. That's right. It's you. So Brianna, I was wondering if we could do a little scat singing today. Of course, I would love to. Okay, well why don't, before we really get into it, why don't we just warm up a little bit? Yes, I agree. So how about, we do a little call and response. I'll play something on my horn, and maybe you can scat sing it back to me. So you mean you want me to listen to what you're playing on your horn and then repeat it? Exactly. Oh. So I'll just play something. You sing it back. Easy peasy. Yeah. But guess what? I'm going to try to stump her. I'm going to try to play something she can't even scat back at me. But it'll, it'll be great. It'll just, it'll just be a conversation, Bree. Just a conversation. Let's go. play, she can scat back to me. She is a master. What did I say? Right. Well, Bree, since you're such a master, I wonder, could you do a little scat singing on this next song with all of us? Yes, I would love to. In fact, we have more masters with us, do you know. We? There are several scat masters in the world, and we know a few. I know that you guys do. How about, do you guys remember Mary in the fifth grade from Louis Armstrong Middle School? The middle school named after my hero? Yes. I remember Mary. Do you remember Mary? Mary came up with some scat syllables that were quite nice. So I thought I'd scat them. Yeah. Go ahead. She said, Do ba do ba sha do li da. There's 
also Chimona, a fifth grader from PS69Q in Queens. Remember her? Mm-hmm, Shimona. Shimona, Kimona, you said it, girl. You said, scat, boobity, bop, de boop, de bop. Y'all got that? Now we have Ethan from the Hoon School of Princeton in Princeton, New Jersey. And he liked to say pop like pops. And we put it in the scat. He said, Wop, pop, 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 pop. for Mary, Shimona, and Ethan, yeah. our masters of scat, with their wonderful syllables. Thank you all for sharing. And now, you guys have inspired me so much that I would love, if you would love, to play a song by your great hero, Mr. Louis Armstrong. It's called Dinah, and I'll scat with you on it, if you don't mind. All right, shall we? Thank you so much, Bree. Thank you. Now, uh, Dion, do you think that you could introduce our next character? Absolutely, Jake. The next person we are going to talk about is an amazing vocalist from New Orleans. And she made a style of music absolutely speak to our souls. That style of music was called gospel music. And her name is Mahalia Jackson. Now, Mahalia Jackson obviously sang a lot of music in church by singing gospel music, but she also sang at protests as well. And at the famous 
speech of Martin Luther King when he gave the speech, I Have a Dream, Mahalia Jackson actually sang before Martin Luther King gave that speech. And we are lucky on this stage to have our own master of gospel music, the great Brianna Thomas, and she's going to take us to church. Bree, could you please? Yes. Well, the song that I'm going to sing now is a wonderful tune about keeping hope alive. Can y'all say that with me? Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. That's right. Got to do it. This is a song called His Eye is on the Sparrow. alive. <laughs> Thank y'all. Well, keeping hope alive was something Mahalia sang about a lot. Miss Mahalia Jackson sang another song, and it was about a battle. And you know what we do when we go to battle? We have to get our spirits ready. And it was no different. In this story, it was about a man named Joshua. And the song is called Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. Joshua walked around a wall until it came tumbling on down. And that's what we do when we face problems in life. So in the spirit of keeping hope alive, this is Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. But I need your help. 
can you guys help me with something here? Because yeah, sure. we got to get the spirit moving. So I need you to help me with something called a stomp and clap. You're going to have to stand up with me, though. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So it goes something like this. You're going to stomp, and then you're going to clap. And here we go. Follow me. the camera wasn't on me because my tears were tumbling down after you saying Sparrow, Brie. My goodness. Thank you. So we're going to talk about one more New Orleans character. And I was wondering, Dennis, could you introduce this person? Sure, Jake. I'd be happy to, uh, to talk a little bit about the great Jelly Roll Morton, an incredible piano player with an incredible name, Jelly Roll Morton from New Orleans. Now, Jelly Roll he was in New Orleans playing music professionally, starting in a time just before the creation of jazz, a little over 100 years ago. And then he continued as a professional musician well after jazz was an established art form. And he was right there in the middle of New Orleans when all of this was happening. And he was also an incredible storyteller. And we're very lucky that he recorded a lot of his stories in interviews because this was long before you could just go on the internet and look up anything that you wanted to know. Things had to be written down or recorded in order for future generations like all of us to learn about them. And he told many stories, some of which were exaggerated, such as telling the interviewer that he himself alone invented jazz by himself without any help from anybody else. Now we know, of course, that jazz came from many styles of music and many, many, many cultures and musicians who came before it, but he was an important part of it. So the story is partly true, and we've learned very much from him. And now Peter will tell you a little bit more about Jelly Roll's contribution. So one thing that Jelly Roll did that in this time when we didn't have the internet and we didn't even have, uh, not everybody could listen to a recording to, to hear a song. So he actually wrote the music down on sheet music. And this allowed people all over the country and eventually all over the world to play his music. So we're going to play a piece of his called The Black Bottom Stomp. 
And I'm going to play the very notes that Mr. Jelly Roll played when he did that recording. Stomp, which was originally a dance, right? And then, and Dia, you told me before that it was also a place. Yes, in Detroit, the in Black Bottom. In Detroit, mm -hmm. where you are from. Yes, I am. Yeah. Well, we hope that wherever you are from, wherever you ever, wherever you have watched the show, you have enjoyed it. And we're almost out of time, but we did get a number of questions that you sent in. So. I'm going to ask the band some of these questions. Now, they haven't seen these questions, so they're going to be a little bit of a surprise. OK, um, let's see. This question will be for Peter. Alina, a fifth grader from the Louis Armstrong Middle School in New York, would like to know, how did you find your love of music? a great question from Alina. I, I found my love of music uh, really through my family and hearing the music that they were listening to when I was very young, which actually, in my case, uh, was a little bit of classical music, a little bit of folk music, a lot of different things. And uh, that's how I eventually came to my love of jazz. And I know that's probably how a lot of people came to their love of music to people very close to them. And thanks for that question. All right, thanks for that answer. OK, um, this question will be for Riley. Riley, another Alina, not from 
Louis Armstrong Middle School, but from PS206. They're an eighth grader. They would like to know, how much time does it take to make a song, to compose a song? Oh, how much time does it take to make a song? Well, sometimes it takes a long time. Sometimes it takes day after day. Uh, you add a little bit, one note here, one note there, and it might take a week, it might take two weeks. Sometimes one song can take a whole year. But other times, some of you may have had this before, you're walking down the street, and all of a sudden, like out of nowhere, like a lightning bolt hits you, a song in your head and it's right there. So sometimes it takes no time at all. Uh, but you just always gotta be ready. Cause you never know when that song's gonna hit you. Great question, Alina. All right. Now this is from Harold, a fifth grader from Kip Infinity Middle School here in New York. And let's see, India. Do you ever mess up or ever get nervous on stage? Well, hi, Harold. Of course it's gonna happen, because that's how life happens. And life is related to music. You can't have one without the other. So when I first started playing bass, my mentors were Marcus Belgrave, a great trumpet player, and Rodney Whitaker, my first bass teacher. And they would hear me mess up day after day after day. But then after a while, when I messed up, I fixed it. And then I fixed it faster and faster, and those mistakes didn't even sound like mistakes to other people. And I learned from it. And they're not called mistakes, it's called lessons. You learn lessons through music, and you learn lessons through life. So think of it that way, and always try to improve yourself. And don't beat yourself up too much, because everyone is practicing every day. All of us on stage, we don't know everything. And this music is a constant life journey. All right. Now, this next one is actually not a, a question, but a comment from Jackson, a ninth grader from the Hun School in Princeton, New Jersey. Uh, they said, love y'all, appreciate it. Y'all the real ones, have an amazing day. <laughs> okay, and our last one is gonna be from Isaac, a fifth grader, also from the Kip Infinity Middle School. Uh, let's see, Brianna. Why? This is the deep one. You ready? Why? Why do you play music? Oh, what a great question. Why do I play music? Why do we play music? Well, music is something that I found very young and I learned that it helped me to express myself. So that's one reason. But part of expressing yourself is Part of that is, is learning to connect with others. So that's another big reason. I have all of these people are in my family and they're my friends now because we love music and we came together to make songs, learn, and to just jam and have fun. And music has been one of those things that has been a guiding light. It's there when I'm sad. It's there when I'm happy. It's there when I need to celebrate or when I need encouragement and so are my fellow friends and musicians. So I play music because it inspires me to try harder, to be better, and to just enjoy the moment and to live in it and express myself fully with my friends and family. And I hope that you find music to do that for you as well. Yeah. There's nothing left to say after that. So should we play one more song and then head home? Yeah. All right, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you again soon.